In this video, I want to discuss the impact and influence of television on uh, political campaigns and campaign messaging in particular. So, uh, you know, back in the 1950s when television really became popular, it was really sort of the new media of the time. We think about, you know, social media and things like that, uh, digital media on the Internet being the new media of today. But at that time, I mean, television had just as big an impact and on people's lives and an influence on on the way we approach things. So it um, really was the new media of the time. Now, keep in mind, though, that this was in the 1950s. So you can see here in this graph the, the growth of the number of televisions or number of households, percentage of households with televisions between 1950 and 1955 grew almost exponentially there, right? So, I mean, it just kind of exploded in the early 1950s and, and became much more readily available to people in their homes. So then it uh, became much more of an impact uh, in political campaigns as well. Starting with the 1952 presidential campaign, really, where you had uh, Dwight Eisenhower versus Adlai Stevenson. Now, Stevenson was a very traditional, this is Adlai Stevenson, very traditional politician, um, you know, kind of a famed rhetorician, a uh, wonderful speaker, an orator, uh, kind of long-winded though. So the two of them took very different approaches to how they would use television in their campaigns. Again, remember, this is 1952. TV is very new. Politicians have really never used television to, to any real extent uh, before this time. So Stevenson's approach was to purchase half-hour blocks uh, and basically give a speech, give a stump speech, and, and present himself that way. So he bought these half-hour blocks. Now, in order to be, to, to be able to afford them, they were late at night. And, and you can imagine people weren't all that excited about it. They had to stay up late at night if they wanted to watch it. And, and he, it's just him talking for half an hour. As opposed to Dwight Eisenhower, who took a different approach. He contracted some um, Hollywood people, some actors and, and directors from Hollywood, and, uh, and and brought in some advertising people and came up with this really cool advertising campaign, a slogan, I like Ike, he went by Ike, and uh, I like Ike, and they made this commercial where, people, you know, it's cartoons, people marching through the street chanting, I like Ike, I like, I mean, there's a, there's a whole song that goes with it, right? I mean, that's much more catchy, and he could play these throughout the day on television. People were seeing them much more often because they were more likely to be watching during the day than the later hours and the evening hours, uh, you know, 10, 11 at night or whatever, um, when they were going to have to catch Stevenson. So, I mean, Eisenhower really revolutionized the idea of using television uh, for political campaigns and things. Uh, hadn't really been done before that. In fact, it kind of been um, uh, looked on as beneath politics, but uh, was very effective in this case, in Eisenhower's case. And, and really, that's the advent of when you see like media managers and people like that now, as opposed to the, to before where they just kind of did what Stevenson did, right? Just did it on their own. Um, but Eisenhower hired these people, had media managers and things. So really revolutionized the way that politicians used television in their campaigns. Fast forward a couple of years now, Eisenhower won election, he's, he's president, elected president in 1952 and 1956. His vice president during that time was Richard Nixon, who then ran in 1960 uh, and opposed uh, Jack Kennedy, JFK, in the 1960 presidential election. So you have Senator Kennedy and Vice President Nixon, both um, very, you know, pretty well known in the, in the political field. But uh, um, then you have the kind of advent of these televised debates. Uh, and this is where the debates start to pick up significance. Uh, in fact, before, again, debates, televised debates, and debating your opponent was kind of, uh, on, on, on television was kind of looked down upon um, famously. Um, uh, Roosevelt famously turned down a uh, uh, an offer to debate um, his opponent, Winchell, in, in one of their uh, elections because it was just beneath him. People don't do that. But by the time 1960 comes around, TV's much more, a known quantity and much more utilized, so the debates are not televised. And famously in this debate, I mean, you have Jack Kennedy, who's this I mean, young, charismatic guy who's who's well spoken and really you know can can articulate himself well. Versus Richard Nixon, who's more the traditional politician, um, not quite as articulate, and and also had some you know sense of probably jealousy and things. But also, well, famously during this debate, the lights were so incredibly hot. People weren't used to doing this. They did, they weren't accustomed to being on TV and uh, for long periods of time and under these intense, bright, um, hot lights that they had to use to light the studio. And as a result, Nixon kept wiping his face with his, uh, with his handkerchief and, and was visibly like sweating and uncomfortable um, during that time. And it, there's some speculation that he may have also been ill, but I mean, at the very least, his, his, the heat was getting to him under these lights. 
and he came across again compared to Jack Kennedy, who just is you know, looks like a movie star, right? And is young and composed and and articulate. And Nixon's over there sweating buckets and looking like he's so nervous to be there. I, I mean, just didn't present a very good image. And one of the things we'll talk about here, <coughs> excuse me, is that television really um, brought to the forefront the the notion of image and personality for politicians, which hadn't been a thing before. So. Uh, Kennedy, obviously, I mean, if you, as you're probably aware, Kennedy wins that election. Nixon becomes president later, but not for several years. And uh, so, uh, but television, again, had a huge impact in that. People saw this debate and thought, boy, that guy doesn't look very presidential. That guy looks nervous and he looks like he can't handle pressure and so forth. And so um, there's all kinds of things going on here. But famously, that set up this era of debates as well. So now we, we move forward past this era and television is becoming much more the norm so it's not so much an exception as a norm at this point so we get into television as kind of the new normal and the new normal for politics is sort of as, as we've become well accustomed to the new normal becomes kind of these ads these, these different kinds of ads and and moving away from things like uh, I like Ike and um, things like that moving into uh, for example you have Lyndon Johnson's um, Daisy ad it's famous what's called the Daisy ad from 1964. So, of course, if you again to put this in perspective, Kennedy is president, elected president in 1960, is assassinated. Johnson becomes president, that had been vice president, becomes president as a result of Kennedy's assassination, and then runs for president on his own in 1964 against Barry Goldwater. Uh, and Barry Goldwater was a Republican, and and P Johnson's campaign wanted to kind of portray him as a hothead. So. We have this Daisy campaign, which starts out with this very sweet-looking girl, little girl, right? And she's just counting. She's pulling petals off the daisy, and she's counting down. You know, she's 10, 9, 8, 7, you know. And you may think, well, why is she counting down? But then you get down to, like, 5, and all of a sudden this really ominous voice comes in. 5, 4, 3. I mean, this, like, countdown voice, real countdown voice. And then 1. And then we see this nuclear explosion, and everything is just, va you know, vaporized, and including, presumably, this little girl. And the idea is that, and, and the, the, the voice at the end kind of implies that if you elect Barry Goldwater, there'll be a nuclear war. Yeah. And so this is really the advent of kind of negative campaigning, at least to this level. Um, it was the first really serious negative campaign and uh, uh, famously only aired once, but has been viewed, uh, you know, millions and millions of times since then. But only aired once because it was so kind of abrupt and in your face and just kind of really threw people, really shocked people. Uh, Johnson took a lot of flack for this ad, but so you have Johnson Daisy ad, you know, and and this kind of continues though. That opens the door and continues. Another famous one we had in 1988 was um, George H. W. Bush's Willie Horton ad, where he's running against Michael Dukakis. Again, he, Bush is the sitting vice president. He's running against Michael Dukakis, who's a senator and um, uh, uh, sorry, former governor. As former governor of, of Massachusetts, had this program where they would furlough prisoners. And one of those prisoners was Willie Horton, who, while he was out on furlough, like a weekend pass or whatever, uh, murdered a, a few people. And, I mean, it was a really big deal. And, and so Bush runs this ad saying, basically, Dukakis lets murderers out, lets people get killed. Is that who you want as president? And uh, really does a lot of damage to, to, I mean, it's very effective. Does a lot of damage to Dukakis's campaign. And, and, and really, I mean, just that was sort of viewed as the end of that campaign. Bush had won at that point because he, but that, I mean, that's unfurling the big guns there. So again, you get this continuation kind of escalation of negative campaigning becoming the norm and, and using television in that way. Uh, and then, of course, presently we have, uh, you know, Donald Trump's, you know, just all of his ads really are, are sort of like this. So um, so it's continued on and, and grown and escalated into what it is today. Uh, we also see, though, the new normal of this is, you know, the amount of money spent on television in campaigns. Uh, U.S. political campaigns is has grown and grown and grown, and I saw uh, just recently the statistics as we you know approach the election here for 2020. The presidential cam uh, the major presidential candidates, so um, Joe Biden and Donald Trump combined, have spent one over one billion dollars on television ads just for the 2020 election. One billion dollars between those two candidates. Uh, spent on television ads so you know people are talking about social media and different things and how that's on the rise and the internet and the, you know and it is people they're using that more effectively in texting but television is still king when it comes to to uh, campaigning and campaign messages in these in these larger uh, national campaigns in particular but but really statewide campaigns as well 
So just real quick, some of the impact, the major impacts that uh, television has had on campaigns, some of the impact points. First of all, we have a longer election cycle. This has really expanded. People are advertising more and more. Um, it used to be the election cycle started basically with the, the uh, conventions, which take place usually over the summer. So the presidential campaign would run from like July to November. And now we're running like a year and a half. We're in like 18-month presidential campaigns, including the primaries and things. And people are spending money during that whole time because, you know, it just keeps getting further and further out. People start running ads earlier and earlier, so it's extended that election cycle, really. The introduction of campaign ads was a major impact that, that uh, has had when we discussed a little bit about those the, the impact that those have had over the years. But you didn't have those, obviously, before television. You didn't advertise on television before there was television. So people are using that, obviously, much, much more now. Uh, and so that introduction was one way that television has had a significant impact on campaigns. The importance, I, I touched on this earlier, the, I mentioned this, the importance of personality and image. Now we can see the candidates. We get a feel for what they're like, what their personality is like. And and if you don't have much personality, that's going to be a real detriment. Um, so back in 1996, 96, uh, Clinton and Dole um, was, it, was a pretty stark contrast in personality. Um, Clinton's is, again, younger. He's not only the sitting president, he's incumbent president, but he's younger, he's energetic, he's pers he's got a lot of personality, he's a great orator, and, and uh, really connects well with people. And Dole, for all of his positive qualities, Rob Robert Dole, Bob Dole, um, was a World War II hero, and had been a senator for a long time, and a great guy, a great uh, uh, figure in government and things, but he, he kind of had a kind of had a monotone voice, and kind of didn't know how to connect with people real well, and, did, you know, it, it, I mean, television just killed him. I, he, in the debates and things, he just came off as having, he came off as your kind of curmudgeonly old grandpa. So despite all of his all of his other qualities, that's really the, the predominant uh, image that people had of Bob Dole because of television. Really. Uh, the prominence of debates. They, again, debates weren't a thing really before 1960, and even then they were kind of a, just kind of seen as, as a random thing people didn't pay a whole lot of attention to except for the fact that Nixon was sweating the whole time but uh, but now they're they're major events I mean you, you really can't imagine a, a major presidential candidate declining a, a, a debate at this point it would be seen as as kind of sacrilegious I mean you have to do the debates but uh, so and television is the result of that there have always been debates I mean you could go back and and the famous you know Lincoln Douglas debates in the 1860s and and things um, that happened in the 1850s, 1860s uh, were going on. And so there have always been debates, but they were never really that prominent. It was always just kind of this thing that people read about afterwards and things. But now the events, or debates are an event. People pay attention to them. Um, think of the, the uproar that, that the first debate in this year's presidential campaign was such a disaster because people pay attention to those. People want that information and they, they look to those. I, I can tell you, I personally look to the debates because that's where you get real substance that's where you get these I know what what they're actually going to talk about and what they're actually going to do so the debates have become much much more important uh, with the advent of television and the in the explosion of television uh, and then finally television news coverage oh my goodness now we have you know people following uh, from all different parties following the uh, presidents at all times and the, and you know the news channels for the last couple of weeks here leading up to this 2020 election have been non-stop presidential election stuff news coverage and so television news coverage has not only changed the way that we view campaigns but the way that the the candidates themselves view those campaigns and the way they interact with the media and things so um just television news coverage has, has had a major impact on the way uh, people campaign and the way we view campa campaigns so so although television has evolved over the years obviously that the nature of television sets and the usage of television and what's available to us has evolved over the years um, the one thing that has continued to grow throughout that entire time is the importance of television in political campaigns, both for the candidates who want to get their message out and want to, you know, uh, tell people why they should vote for them and so forth, but also to us as the viewers um, to, to, to have the access to those candidates and it's really <clears throat> excuse me, changed the way that we view these candidates and the way that we interact with them and, and what our expectations are from them. So television, major impact on campaign and campaign communications. And if you have any questions about this or anything else related to uh, campaign messages and campaign communication, please don't hesitate to email. I'd love to hear from you via email and, and talk more about this. In the meantime, get out there and really check out um, the impact that, that television and consider the impact that television has had on your uh, perception of and uh, intake of political information and campaign information.